I think I just read one of the most brain dead things ever. Changes to aircraft carriers and anti-air. Closed test. Greetings, captains. Back in December, we announced our plans to implement significant changes to aircraft carriers. We hope you're ready for more news because we have a boatload of info to share. As a reminder, we'll be conducting our first major closed test on April 16th, which is tomorrow, to try out these updates so cer certain levels can and will change as we move through the testing process. With that out of the way, let's get down to business. Changes to aircraft carriers. First, I'm going to go through this super quick because I'm in a rush. Some key details. As announced previously, the core of the new concept boils down to significantly changing the way that aircraft carriers operate while traveling and attacking. Traveling. Similar to the current implementation, traveling, also now known as high altitude, is the state that aircraft will spend the most time in as they traverse the map. What will be different? While traveling, aircraft will not spot enemy ships. This is great. Will not be targetable by regular AA fire. This is super bad. Will not deplete their boost. Why do they even have the boost then? Just remove the boost and, and adjust the speed. Can be spotted by enemy ships. Okay. Cannot attack enemy ships or drop ordnance in any way. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what that means. Exceptions apply. See action defensive AFR. This means that aircraft carriers must rely on spotting from teammates in order to identify targets. Carrier squadron will also have access to a new consumable called active reconnaissance. While active, this consumable will provide an indicator when aircraft are within range of enemy AA. Yeah, it's like six cents. Similar in appearance to the spotted indicator. Yeah, there you go. And will also show if an enemy has used their updated prior sector. See details further down. Note that this consumable will not provide actual spotting or minimap indicators and will not work if the enemy ship has its AA turned off. Okay, I like that. Attack runs. We've talked about traveling, but how do you actually interact with enemy ships now? Similar to the current implementation, aircraft carriers must start an attack run. While conducting an attack run, aircraft will spot enemy ships, become targetable by AA fire, take significantly reduced damage from a <laughs> take significantly reduced damage from AA for the first few seconds of the attack run. <laughs> so they're like invulnerable. Then they show up on top of you, conduct an AA, uh, attack run. You can't do any significant damage to them in the first few seconds. And then just as you can, they drop and leave, right? Will deplete their boost as usual. Can attack enemy ships. Oh my god. Compared to the current implementation, there are some additional key differences. Preparation time for attack runs have been increased. Ah. To prevent them from simply starting an attack run right above the ship and avoid most of the air. Wow. <laughs> Planes will, however, not have reduced maneuverability during the attack preparation time, eh, which will make it a bit easier for the carrier to strike when there are no allies nearby to spot the target. Additionally, attack runs will consist of... Um, uh, where is it? Only consist of one attacking flight, while the rest of the squadron will remain at high altitude and will not receive AA fire. Any planes that are destroyed in the attack run will not be replaced. Meaning that shooting down planes will directly reduce the damage dealt by the attack. If the entire attack flight is destroyed, the run is aborted. Okay, this needs further explanation. Expl explaining. This definitely needs further explaining. Attack runs will only consist of one attack flight. Okay, so let's say you have 12 in the squadron. Three go down. Any planes that are destroyed in the attack run will... Ah, so the three that are conducting the attack, if any of those gets shot down, they will not get replaced by the ones that stay on the high altitude. Meaning that shooting down planes will directly reduce the damage dealt by the attack. Okay, if the entire attack flight is destroyed, the run is aborted. So you go back to the, like the nine that are still above. Okay, well, if the AA will be useful, okay, that's not bad. Secondaries, while not controlling aircraft carriers, sorry, while not controlling aircraft, carriers will now be able to manually control their secondary battery. In the case of carriers with mixed secondary armaments, they will control the largest caliber guns. They'll become main caliber ones while over, oh no. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, the shit show that we're about to be a part of. <laughs> oh my god. Whoa. They'll become the main killer ones. While operating aircraft, all guns will be aimed and fired automatically as usual. Oh Jesus. Changes to surface ships. So those are the key changes for how aircraft carriers will operate. What about surface ships? We also have some substantial changes coming to the way that surface ships interact with aircraft through their anti air batteries. First up, defensive AA fire. We mentioned earlier that aircraft carriers in travel mode will be untargetable by AA. Well, here's an exception. While defensive AA is active, your AA batteries will be able to target enemy planes even while they're flying over you at high altitude. However, while active, planes at high altitude which are under fire will be able to spot you in return. With these changes, we're also renaming this consumable to barrage fire. I am actually mind blown. I, th I saw just a couple of statements in the short Volves Dev blog that we have on our Discord that popped, and I thought this was going to be the dumbest shit I ever read. I'm shocked. Most things by now uh, that I've read so far make actually really good sense. So far, I'm, 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 I'm hesitating to say, but I'm, I'm almost impressed. It only took him forever in the game to die, but here we go. Um... Priority Sector is receiving some major changes and will be renamed to Active Concealment. What? Similar to the current Priority Sector, Active Concealment can be activated with the press of a button and takes effect within your anti-air range. When activated, it will instantly deal a certain percentage of the squadron's health in damage when it enters the air fire. Honestly, this is one of the dumbest things they ever introduced. Priority sector is by far, the way they introduced it, this last iteration where you click a button and you just bleh, do it uh, like magic missile damage. It's the dumbest part of AA ever, but sure. Additionally, active concealment will cause enemy aircraft within range to become unable to, hold on. Active concealment will cause enemy aircraft within rage to become unable to spot, making aircraft reliant on teammate spotting. So it's like you have such a huge barrage of fire that the enemy cannot even see where it's coming from. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. It doesn't, I think, but sure, okay. The effect will also negate the damage reduction that planes receive in the first seconds of their attack run. However, it is important to know that this should be used preemptively and not reactively, as the effect will only trigger on enemy planes if they enter your AA while the effect is active. If the planes are already in the AA zone and the effect is activated, it will not block their ability to spot, will not negate the AA damage reduction, and will not apply the percentage damage to the squadron. Good timing will be critical to effective use of this. Yeah, well... True, but it also means that the carriers can just bait you <laughs> and you're going to shoot yourself in the knee. So, okay. Passive increase to AA. We're not done just yet. All surface ships will receive a new passive way to deal with enemy planes targeting you while there are planes in your AA zone. Okay. Passive increase is a meter that will charge up while your AA is shooting enemy aircraft. Your progress is not time limited. Meaning that even if your AA does not shoot enemy... Okay, hold on. Passive increase is a meter that will charge up while your AA is shooting enemy aircraft. Okay, so something like the F key for, like, super battleships. Your progress is not time limited. Oh, that's good. Meaning that even if your AA does not shoot enemy aircraft for a certain period of time, progress will stay the same way and not decay. But once your progress reaches 100%, the passive increase will be automatically activated and you will receive the following perks for a period of time. Ah, so this is essentially something that the carrier will control and not you, even though it's your ship. I don't like that. A bonus to AA damage, a bonus to the damage caused by active concealment, former, formerly priority sector, a reduction in active concealment cooldown, Um, a reduction in active concealment cooldown. Okay. Additionally, this passive increase will not reset 
if you disable your AA, will last for, oh, it will last for several minutes. Well, that's something. We decided to go with an automatic activation of this feature due to the extended length of the action time as this is supposed to serve as a defensive tool. The effects of this passive mechanic should strongly disincentivize aircraft carriers from relentlessly focusing a single target. We've already introduced several other active changes for players and we want to avoid a scenario where, for example, all players in an attack path activate this simultaneously and almost instantly destroy the attack flight. Oh yeah, like that ever happened. As it is supposed to serve only to disincentivize constant attacks from the aircraft carrier over a longer period of time, not a general de deterrent. That's all for now. We hope you're excited as we are to see these changes enter testing and look forward to updating you as we continue work on the test and the concept. Hardly, I mean, honestly, if you're getting excited about anything related to World of Warships so far, um, uh, okay, uh, sure. But, um, I mean, it literally took their game to fucking die, where you're having very often 9v9, 10v10, and stuff like that in the middle of the day, uh, where you spend 15 to 20 minutes in the queue without being able to get a game, and, and so on, for them to 